It's a lot of change, a lot of change for a city that you remember when you were young. 65 years ago, the Alaskan Way Viaduct opened with fanfare. There is no person that lives in Seattle that doesn't have a memory about this viaduct. Tonight, a part of history closes for good. Business is not as usual. We are going to see a longer travel times into the city on Monday morning. Now commuters brace for the Viadoom, Viacopolis, Seattle Squeeze, or as the city is calling it, the period of maximum constraint. Good evening. Welcome to King 5 News at 11. All day, this is what we have been preparing for the permanent closure of the Alaskan Way Viaduct. Crews planned on shutting down the highway at 10 o'clock tonight, but at 11, <laughs> as you can see, there's still a lot of people Look, trying it's, to it's take their last Look, it's date night right trip. here, right? That's right, they're walking, walking. They're getting out of their cars to take pictures. They're stopping on both sides of the viaduct. This is really crazy. Oh, and they're honking their horns. You can't hear it here, but you're, they're honking their horns. And we have heard reports of fireworks being blasted That's off. wild. So take a look. This is video from one of our crews out on the road. People honking, shooting fireworks. This is the lower deck. You can hear those horns just resonating off that concrete. It was bumper to bumper. As Lori said, it was supposed to close an hour ago, and it is packed right now. Here's a live look toward the south end of the viaduct. People are still out of their cars, taking pictures, enjoying the view. Amanda Grace and Greg Copeland are live in Pioneer Square overlooking the viaduct. Amanda and Greg, how's it going? Hey, Lori and Mark, uh, you guys said it, that 10 o'clock deadline, yeah, that didn't stop the party here on the viaduct. Uh, there's still a ton of cars here in the northbound lanes. A lot of them have pulled over. Uh, they're going incredibly slowly, people getting out of their cars, taking pictures. We've even seen some motorcycles turn around, drive the wrong way on the northbound lanes in the viaduct. Uh, we're finally starting to see some police vehicles here, so we think this is the final push here they're, on the northbound lanes. They're trying lanes. to make it, but there are a lot of people, again, still up here parked, and so it's a matter of whether they're going to come up and start pushing people, you know, getting them out of the way so they can get the rest of the traffic through, because there are still, I would say, a, maybe dozens, maybe a hundred cars mm -hmm. down on that end of the viaduct, and a lot of them are just parked there for right now. So quite the party atmosphere tonight. Yes, we can tell you that we think the southbound lanes have cleared out, uh, but it's going to be three weeks now until the new tunnels open, and we're going to have to deal with the traffic that now comes. After the roads close, which they have, but not really. After this is all done, they're going to get right to work tomorrow trying to get that uh, new tunnel back open as quickly as possible. King 5's Natalie Swaby has more on that. Work starts right away. Tonight, they're going to be working to remove an embankment over at Royal Brome. Tomorrow at 9 a.m., they're going to be demoing a portion of the viaduct at Dearborn. Now, take a look. This is the Columbia Street on-ramp that they closed at 945 tonight. Remember, 90,000 commuters rely on the viaduct daily, so the message tonight is to get ready for increased traffic downtown and across the region. Today was a chance to crowd on and take in the viaduct view one last time. Looking over from the top deck and looking at the water and everything and looking at the big wheel. Adrian Mendez says he's sad to see it go. It lives its life and it did what it did for a good 65 years. Now the focus shifts to what's next. Everybody's obviously very concerned about the traffic. Terrace Bowen lives in Belltown and has grown accustomed to the gridlock. She's bracing for even bigger backups. A lot more people will have to use surface streets. Streets that run right in front of this salon. We're at Senza Salon, downtown Seattle at uh, First and Seneca. Right next to where the viaduct is. Hairstylist Kelly Corey relies on the bus to get here. I was pretty bummed. Um, I live in West Seattle, so I take the viaduct every day. A few chairs down is Evie Ulich. She commutes from Redmond by car. I drive a car because I uh, get off really late at night. Between the shampoos and haircuts, talk turns to what the viaduct shutdown will be like. I have no idea. Like, I wish I knew, but I really don't. So it's, it's really just daunting. Commuters crossing downtown with no Highway 99 for three weeks. That's what worries her. Yeah, it's just going to be nuts everywhere. Like, our clients could be late. You may have people who will be a little late to work. And here, they have their predictions. It'll be a little learning curve, I'm sure, in the beginning. And outside the salon's doors, some say they know what's coming. For three weeks, it is going to be an absolute nightmare. I think it's going to be really crazy. 
What no one can deny is this viaduct view will soon be gone forever. When the viaduct temporarily shut down in 2016, there were longer commute times on I-5 and I-405. WashDOT says they expect to see that again. And they have a lot of work to do in the next three weeks. They say weather could be their biggest adversary, but if everything goes according to plan, the tunnel should open on February 4th. In Seattle, Natalie Swaby, King 5 News. So if you plan to take the bus to avoid traffic, check out this map. There are 12 bus lines that will be rerouted because of the closure, including many buses that come from north and west Seattle, including the Sea line And when you take the bus, you may want to ditch the cash and pay with an Orca card. You can buy one at orcacard.com or at a ticket vending machine. They kind of work like debit cards. You can reload money onto it anytime. Using it to pay will save you more time and more money. You just have to tap it to get on. Going to give you a live look at the north end of the viaduct right now, where it really has been a party atmosphere up there with a lot of people out of their cars, fireworks, and you can hear the police probably, the siren in the back. They are now coming up the south end, uh, headed north, making their sweep, telling people to get back in their cars and really trying to get everybody off the viaduct at this point. But it is something, obviously, it's been more than an hour since they closed uh, or they were supposed to close the viaduct, and it's going to take a long time. Nope. <laughs> you, you, you can kind of make that out. They're, they're right behind us right now, coming up, but there's still a long line of cars up behind us. So you can see them right now as yep. they're pushing people that have been pulled over with their hazards on, getting them to start moving. And the line still goes down into the stadium district. So they still have quite a few cars that they are going to have to get off. Lots of horns. <laughs> Guardian one overhead, we're told. And boy, this has just been a process. But they're going to be working their way up to that. The, the party atmosphere, if you will, up there in the north end. So again, tomorrow, once this is all clear, tomorrow they're getting right to work. They're not wasting any time uh, trying to get those new tunnels open. King 5's Glenn Farley breaks down exactly what will transpire. Let's start at the north end. Most of the new roadway to the tunnel is in, but the final connections need to be made between north and southbound Highway 99 in and out of the tunnel. Well, the viaduct will close during the three-week cutover, southbound and northbound lanes will continue to roll through the Battery Street Tunnel as far as Western Avenue. But to make the southbound tunnel connection, only one southbound lane will remain open, and that's a pinch point. Harrison Street will be open east and west across old Highway 99 with new stoplights. Things are more complicated at the south end of the tunnel. During the closure, DOT will complete the southbound main line out of the tunnel and all but one of the on and off ramps into and out of the tunnel connecting the south part of downtown. But the northbound off ramp into downtown will take additional time. I mean, it will take a while. It's slow. It's very slow. Okay, so a lot of you are sharing some of your memories of the viaduct with us in our viaduct closure Facebook page. Debbie took this picture. She says uh, this was the last sunrise for this morning's final commute. Beautiful way to say goodbye. Lene says never thought I'd get emotional about 10,000 tons of <laughs> right. concrete. I always thought to myself while sitting in the city traffic, if I had to commute at least I had that view. And finally, Judy took this picture of the sunset during her last viaduct drive. We did have a beautiful day to enjoy the final day on the viaduct. You gotta love it. Don't forget, we do have a complete guide. Uh, everything you need to know about what's going to transpire the next three weeks as they try to get everything taken care of. On Facebook, we're taking all of your questions in a group discussion. You can search the words Seattle Tunnel Traffic. Again, that's on Facebook. Let's take some live pictures right now because the final car on the northbound lanes of the viaduct is now within view. Uh, let's take a live look right now uh, if we can see that final car because we are beginning to see uh, the last police vehicle try to push those cars forward, but they are at an absolute standstill right now. Uh, we have been seeing cars uh, moving pretty slowly throughout the night. Uh, right now, these cars aren't going anywhere, but these people wanted this final view. They wanted these final moments. And that's what they're getting, a little more time to enjoy the view, right? I just, I just walked across the deck so I could get a view of the northbound because we, we, it's just around the bend. And there's still a steady stream of red lights there. And I think they only have one lane basically open at the end of this thing. So everybody's getting off slowly, nobody in a rush, especially if you're up front and the police are still at the back. Mm -hmm. 
they're not in a, a real rush yet, so it, it could be a while. It could be here till, I doubt they'll be here till midnight, but. <laughs> but this is what people wanted, right? This is the one time you want to be stopped in traffic on the viaduct. <laughs> yeah, they're hoping to get a, a little bit of a pass, and that's why it's been, I think, such a party atmosphere tonight. It's just been a place, I, and I'd be curious to see afterward, you know, where did people come from to right. take this final trip? I already saw some people on Facebook who said, yep, I came up today, I did the final, I, I came, uh, down the lower deck and then went up the you know up the upper deck, made my loop and called it good. And I think people from all over the probably all over Puget Sound region have done that, something like that today. Right, trying to relive memories yeah. and, and get one final look at this. Uh, so the big test, of course, for all of this and the traffic that will come will be Monday morning. Uh, that's when there will be no more viaduct and no tunnel just yet. And so we're going to be on extra early for you. We're going to be on at 4 a.m. Uh, we'll have your latest news and bring you the latest traffic conditions as well. And we are keeping an eye on that very final vehicle. And yes. when it goes by, we'll bring it to you live. Mark, Lori. <laughs> OK, so Amanda and Greg, something you guys said is really resonating on social media right now on Twitter. Uh, Sumac Jack said, so bittersweet. I understand why people are parked there saying goodbye. The viaduct isn't earthquake safe, but sigh, oh, that view day and night. And I think that's really what we're all going to miss about it. Just that panoramic view of our area on the Seattle waterfront. All I can say is that the police and state patrol are packing a lot of patience tonight. <laughs> they understand what people are feeling. Thanks, y'all.